Hello, and welcome to the fourth episode of the Software Carpentry Lecture on Make. In this episode, we'll see how to write rules that capture general patterns in dependencies and rules. As in previous episodes, we're looking at how to manage tasks and dependencies automatically using Make. For the paper the robot is working on, paper.pdf depends on paper.wdp, figure1.svg, and figure2.svg, while figure1.svg depends on summary1.dat, which in turn depends on all the files with names like data11.dat, data12.dat, and so on. In the previous episode, we saw how to use automatic variables and wildcards to handle any number of files with names matching certain patterns. We still have a lot of redundancy in our makefile, though. The rules for figure1.svg and figure2.svg are identical except for the 1 and 2 in their names, as are the rules for summary1.dat and summary2.dat. Here's the makefile so far. We'd like to fold the rules for the figures together for two reasons. First, if we add a third figure, we don't want to have to duplicate rules a third time. Second, if we ever want to change the way we generate figures, we'd like to make that change once in one place. If we have to make it in several places, the odds are good we'll forget one and then waste time trying to figure out why some of our commands aren't running. The way to do this in Make is to use a pattern rule to capture the common idea. Here's our Make file rewritten to use such a rule. In this rule, percentage is a wildcard. When it is expanded, it has the same value on both sides of the rule, i.e. if it matches one on the left, it must match one on the right as well. Percentage only means something to Make, though. It doesn't have a value in the rules action, which is handed off to the shell for execution. So in the action, we have to use the automatic variables $atsign and $circumflex as before. Let's try running our modified make file. Hmm, summary1.dat is updated, but not summary2.dat or either of the figure files. Why didn't our other commands run? The reason is that pattern rules don't create dependencies, they just tell make what to do if there's a dependency. In other words, if make decides it wants to create figure1.svg, it can use our pattern rule, but we still have to tell make to care about figure1.svg. Let's do this by putting the rule for paper.pdf back in our make file. Here's the full make file. In it, paper.pdf depends on figure1.svg and figure2.svg. Make now knows that it needs these figures. Since there aren't specific rules for them, it uses the pattern rule instead. It's tempting to go one step further and make paper.pdf depend on figure star.svg, but this doesn't work. The reason is that the figure files may not exist when make starts to run. After all, make creates them. In that case, figure star.svg will expand to nothing, so make would mistakenly believe that paper.pdf depended only on paper.wdp. This kind of bug can be very hard to figure out, and unfortunately, Make doesn't come with a debugger to help you track these problems down. Our raw data files do always exist, though, so we can get rid of some more redundancy by taking these two rules and folding them into one using the star wildcard. It's safe to do this because Make isn't responsible for creating data1whatever.dat and data2whatever.dat. There's no possibility of the star missing things because it's evaluated when make starts running. Just as a reminder, the percentage is a make wildcard. It matches the same thing on the left and right side of a pattern rule. Star is a shell wildcard. It matches zero or more characters in a file name when it's evaluated. Can we get rid of the last bit of redundancy by making summary percentage sign dot dat depend on stats.py? No, this doesn't work. Even with this pattern rule, the summary files only depend on the corresponding raw data files, not on stats.py. Why? Because when make sees two or more pattern rules that could match a file name, it uses the first and ignores the other. It's another wart and another source of hard-to-find headaches in make. If we really want to avoid making summary1.dat and summary2.dat depend on stats.py separately, the only way is to go back to the false dependencies we introduced in the previous episode. This make file tells make to update the timestamps on the raw data files using touch whenever stats.py changes. 
This indirectly triggers the recreation of the summary files. It does what we want, just in a roundabout way. As useful as it is, make is less than perfect. In our next episode, we'll see how to define collections of files in make and how to get information in from the outside world.